Come help daddy. Yeah? Where does that go? Show me where it goes. Is that where it goes? Yeah? Is that how it goes? Your, fa your face is so dirty. <laughs> Good job. What's up YouTube? This is my mother-in-law's 2008 Acura TSX. She took it up to have the uh, inspection done on the car to get it registered and they did uh, her a favor and went ahead and uh, checked everything, all the fluids and everything. But they also sent pictures of the rear brakes that were almost out. So that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be replacing the rear brakes and possibly doing an oil change. So let's get to it. So to pop the, uh, need to pop this bolt off and this bolt off and then this uh, caliper will come off and I've got some hangers and I'll hang it up here somewhere because you don't want to like, you don't want them to dangle uh, on the hose. And then there are two more bolts to get the bracket off, which are here. And right there so uh, we'll demonstrate that and also to get the rotor off we got to remove these two here uh, and I've got a special tool for that and I'll show it uh, here in a little while these are size 12 and the bracket bolts back there are size 14 12 and a 14 and I'm actually using a 3 8 uh, 3 8 and I got a couple of extensions just in case. And also you want to get a vice grip or something. Because these pins tend to turn sometimes, so I like to use these needle nose uh, vice grips because they there's rubber right here and you don't want to get onto the rubber. And you really don't need to hold these too tight. They shouldn't be turning at all, but you know, that's just for backup. See it turn? So it's just really just holding it still. Pop this bottom and loose real right quick. And I'm using the extension just to just to make it a little easier to get it off. So uh, both of these bolts are loosened up and. Uh, I'll go ahead and take them all the way out. On the uh, the cord caliper, you can take a, a pry bar in here and push it, and it'll compress the the uh, caliper, which makes it easier to come off. Uh, but I'm not sure if these are the screw type or the push type. Yeah. Yeah. So I was able to pry this just a little bit with the uh, against the pad. And uh, now it's wiggling a little bit, which is perfect. Uh, all right. So let's get these bolts the rest of the way out. Bam, number one's out. And these bolts aren't very long, as you can see. Ooh. And it's nice to have one of these magnetic trays to keep your, uh, your bolts in there. And you can actually stick that right there. Out she comes. So I bought these hangers on Amazon for like six or seven dollars delivered. Um, they're handy or you can use a coat hanger, you can use a zip tie, you can use anything. 
just something to, I've seen some people actually just set it up there, um, but I'm always afraid it's gonna fall, so I don't, uh, I don't do that. Okay, off it comes. And it looks like it'll just sit right there. Bang it. All right, so I went ahead and loosened up the 14 millimeter bolts, one, two. And as you can see, the pads are definitely worn down, but they are pretty much even. Um, I'm not sure about the what's left on the tolerance of this rudder. So I went and ordered two new rudders as well. So I've got new pads and rudders. Slap them on, we're good to go. We got both of these out. You saw me bang the, use the tool. Um, so I'm just gonna remove these, come off just like this. Just like that. And uh, pads are pretty worn, so. Anyway, um, there's a nice little ridge here, which indicates it's probably probably worn. This car's got 190 something thousand miles on it, um, so uh, it's probably time to change them anyway. All right, let's get to it. Bracket after you remove the two 14 millimeter bolts, uh, 14s. This little bracket comes right off. Boom. Yep. And now we're going to bang that rotor. It's that easy. One little tap. Comes right off. Yeah. Okay, so I saw a Honda Tech, or, you know, the guy that was working on Hondas. He, he seemed to be pretty knowledgeable. And uh, he said that if you need to clean this surface here, or else you'll have pulsations and whatnot, uh, you can use sandpaper or I'm going to try to use this thing here. You want to do it in a way it doesn't mar up your uh, um, lugs. But as you can see this has a hole in it so I just put it over like that. So, everything looks to be pretty shiny-ish. At least it's smooth. Got all the surface rust off. We got the uh, Centric Posi Quiet Premium Disc Pads. Uh, these are ceramic or hybrid, I can't remember. Uh, it should come with the hardware. Let's see if that's the truth. Uh, look at there, brand new hardware, awesome. And here are the pads, so we're good to go. Got some rotors. If you'll remember from my other video, I, I ordered a uh, centric, centric slave cylinder for my Corvette. And this is a this is the part number that I ordered. Do 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 do. Centric. All right, oh, there it is right there, ceramic. Includes hardware kit. So, there you go. All right, as you can see, we've got everything torn down. I was starting to put the new rotor back on. And then I realized that they only sent me one rotor, which was my fault because uh, I was supposed to click two. Apparently, I mean, I assumed that it had two but it was only one, but it was only $21. I mean, and I just ordered another one. It's $29 with shipping. It was like $8 shipping, $21 for the part, which was cheaper than I could get, you know, a, a, a similar um, quality brake rotor like that for. Um, I guess I could go turn those old ones and see if they'll work and throw them on today. But, 
you know, then I'll have an extra rear brake rotor. So what I'm going to do, what I did was I went ahead and ordered another one of these for $29 ship from Rock Auto. And this is the downfall of using Rock Auto. You save a lot of money. However, sometimes if you forget to order a part or something, um, you run into this situation here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to button everything back up with the old parts. They're still working. Uh, I'm not, there's no safety issue and then uh, I'll have to pick back up where I left off. You know, uh, you live and you learn, uh, you make mistakes, and uh, fail number one on this job. I thought I was going to get through the whole thing without a fail, but that's alright. That's okay. We live and we learn, right? So, we'll pick back up whenever we uh, get the new parts and uh, probably in a couple of days and uh, get it all put together. Alright, see you then. Got my box in from rockauto.com. Um, so let's open this up and make sure it's the right, right part. 12044055. So we're good. Got our other brake rotor. Um, I could have gotten another brake rotor at like AutoZone or O'Reilly's or something like that, Vance. But, uh, the downside of that is we'd have some mismatch rotors, or if I could buy two over there, I have one sitting here and I have to return it or something. So, so anyway, that's the downside of ordering stuff online. You got to wait for it. You know, sometimes you get order from the parts store, and you got to wait a day to get it anyway. So, once a couple of days, you know, um, if you're wearing a shop or something. You got to get stuff in and out. I can understand that, but I think the price um, at the local auto parts store was almost twice as much for the quality brand. I think the cheaper ones were right around the same price, but uh, this is a higher quality, supposedly um, premium. See that right there, premium brake rotor. Um, installation ready, finished. I'm gonna go ahead and clean it off with some brake fluid anyway because. I think there's supposed to be a film on there. So uh, let's go ahead and get this car pulled in and get it knocked out. There's two where the screws go they're kind of uh, belled in some of the there's two here so there's two with indentations so I'm putting those and everything looks like it's lining up screws back in Phillips head dish I don't know that they're actually Phillips head like a special type of Phillips, weird. Um, there we go. Just a little tap. Probably should have clean cleaned this off beforehand, but I didn't, so. That's what I'm doing now. I mean, you run the risk when you do it off the car to, that you're gonna touch it and get it nice and dirty anyway, so. Okay, that was pretty easy. I'm just holding the back of it over here and then just spinning it because why not make sure there's, there's any kind of residue or whatever that it's no longer on there. As far as compressing this uh, caliper, you see how it's, there it is. This is a screw type. Uh, so what which this takes is, what this takes is one of these and you just stick your 3 8 in there and you find whatever size fits it. You take it in there and you screw it screw it in and uh, the other kind is a uh, compression type which you use this and you just slide it in there and push 
but this is definitely a screw type, which I found on the back of my Honda Accord is the exact same type, which is why I have this. And these are not too expensive, I guess. That you know, I got I think I got this one in Napa. Um, it's pretty reasonable, decent reviews. So, like I said, this is a three eighths, and you'll want to screw it all the way in until it's uh, until it's flush. You know, you want to be careful to uh, not damage the rubber like that because sometimes it slips off it just goes slow once you get it started it starts moving pretty pretty well let me try four sider works let's try that four is better than two yeah All right, I think it just stopped, which is, oh. All right. So I screwed it all the way in, you know, to make room for the, uh, the brake pads in here because the new pads are gonna be thicker, obviously. So uh, this needs to be screwed all the way back to make room. And now I'm gonna replace the hardware. Well, it's weird as I went to the Honda dealer for my Acura or my Honda Accord to get brake pads, and I spent like seventy or eighty dollars on uh, brake pads, and they did not come with the hardware, which is really a joke. You know, it's like it's a it's a kick in the teeth. I had to I had to buy hardware on RockAuto.com for like twelve or fifteen dollars ship, in addition to buying the pads at Honda. So it was like a kick in the teeth, man. Honda wanted. I think they wanted like thirty dollar, thirty something dollars for all the hardware, and they only had three of the four pieces there. It was it was ridiculous. So whatever. There it goes. Just need a little coaxing. There it is. Came right out. Let's match these up. New one, steel one. Let's see. The Centric did a good job. They did an excellent job because it's like an exact match. I don't know why I need to replace this piece, but whatever. I have it, so I'm gonna stick it in. Okay, that was uh, really easy. So when I pulled this bracket off, I left both the brake pads on there so I would know what side, actually it goes like this. So I would know which side the squealer goes on. I always look at it beforehand to make sure, and these actually have shims on them. So I'm gonna, I left it like this so I could tell how to set up the new, the new pads. Okay, so these already have the shims on them installed. Um, and it has a squealer right here, so this one goes on here, and I'm going to not set that down on the pad, obviously. Um, <clears throat> maybe not so obviously. So the pad, the squealer goes like that. So I'm gonna set this here. So I know that goes there. So I know it goes bunk. And this one goes bunk like that. And you can see, yeah, I'd say her uh, pads are pretty well worn out although the squealer was quite, not quite not quite squealing yet um, you can see yeah yep that is uh, definitely 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 worn out let's do one side at a time well that snapped right off didn't it perfect these kind of clip right up in there. Spray some Blake cleaner there. And uh, this should just snap right back in there. And it does. All right, let's get to the other side. Oh, wow, that, that's how I cleaned up well. So don't think you can take anything I see seriously. 
them or do whatever i don't care this is all for educational purposes or humor one or the other and it's not quite seating in there perfectly but whatever it's fine so all right now lubrication i'm gonna lubricate all along here and here on the clip that i just attached to the caliper i'm gonna it, it slides along here so i'm gonna put a little bit there on both the uh, clip on the caliper so i got this uh silicon or ceramic extreme brakes brake lubricant it's good from 50 negative 50 degrees to positive 3000 degrees by permatex and uh, number 203 203 50 203 yeah that's it all right let's get some lubrication on here i kind of like this versus the uh the dipping brush thing because this way I can just kind of squeeze a little bit there, squeeze a little bit there, squeeze a little bit on there, squeeze a little bit there, squeeze a little bit there. Cool. Oh yeah. One thing I forgot. Your uh, pens here. You gotta lubricate the pens. So, take one out at a time. Oh man, I should have done this before. Fail number one lubricate the pens before you do your hardware. Or you might have a mess on your hands. There we go. Okay, see how gross that is? That's pretty gross. So, the boots are okay, they're, they're in okay shape, which is great. Um, so all you got to do is take the uh, blue towel, spray some brake cleaner on there, clean it off like that. Now you don't want to take both of these out at the same time because one of them has, they're different, one of them has like a little uh, rubber piece or something on it and it, you'll be able to see that on the other one when I take it out. Uh, let me dry this off right quick. I think I bought some specific, some pen specific lubrication. If not, I'll just use this stuff because apply caliper lube to pens, slides, bushings, pistons. Okay, yeah, that, that this stuff works. If it works on pens, why not just use it on pens, I guess. So... Put a little bit. Make sure it's nice and you don't want to put too much in there because you'll have like a lock, you know. It'll be locked in there. Hydraulic lock. That's the that's the name I was trying to figure out. Yep, I just touched it. You gross. All right, so these things just snap right, snap right together. Boom. Now the other one. This one should be different. I'm kind of holding the boot. You don't want to use anything metal if you can help it to pry this boot back. Um. You don't want to just like pull, pull, pull it off either because then you'll rip the boot. Let's see if I can use this to kind of break the seal a little bit. Yep, there it goes. Bunk. There it goes. Ew. That one's gross. Now, if you don't, well, I guess this one doesn't isn't any different. But on some of the pens, they're different. So just do one at a time. Um, 
the downside of not doing this is that you may you, they may stick so your brakes will compress but they won't release and you don't want that because then you'll have brake pads riding on your rotor and they'll wear out and you'll be doing them again real soon because they wear out fast I like this stuff use it on everything look nice and purple no much favorite color okay now I got it over my fingers which is awesome let me do that um let me put a little more on there because why not and then it just slides right in and you can see it snap on and it doesn't really matter which direction these are turned so let me double check to make sure I got enough lube there and uh, replace what I wiped off with my finger here and yeah get this uh, brackets ready to go back on grease right here on this bracket and this bracket go ahead and take my big bolts try not to get grease on your new rotor that I just cleaned good enough all right the squealer goes on the bottom on the back like so There we go, that fit nicely, and then this one goes on the front, that fits nicely, and put a little extra grease here. I really like this tube. And then that slides right on. Put the bottom bolt in first. I don't know if you notice I had to push the pin in a little bit. Okay. Tighten that bad boy up. <sighs> okay, that thing's on. It ain't where are you going? Nowhere. Success? Done. Alright. So now we just got a got an empty tray, got no more parts to put on. Everything's looped up, tightened up. Um, so just got to do the other side right quick and uh, drop her down, take her for a test drive. All right, side two, uh, passenger side is finished. We got a empty tray here, so all our parts put back on. So let's slap the wheels on, wheels on it, and let's go drive it.
This is a torque wrench uh, from Tecton. I think it's like 50 to, or 10 to 150. Yeah, 10 foot pounds to 150 foot pounds. It was like $35, I think, or something, something like that. I'll put it in the video, but uh, you always, I always check the manual, even though I know Hondos are typically 80 foot pounds. So, and then uh, you run it up to the 80, where it's 80 and zero. And uh, that's 80 foot pounds. And then you tie it in the bottom, and you're good to go. So, what happens is, you uh, put this on there, and you get to the desired torque, it clicks. So, you stop. You're supposed to exercise the mechanism, so. All right, so everything is all buttoned back up. I'm gonna take it for a test drive and then wait for the parts and we'll get them back on. Here we go. All right, one thing to note, the uh, emergency brake. I was a little bit afraid, not afraid, but concerned because when I pulled the brake up, uh, and I put it on the ground to torque the wheels it was moving back and forth which was uh, weird because it wasn't catching but now it's working so what I read was is these brakes are self-adjusting so all you have to do is push the button down and pull it back pull it back a few times all the way hard and then it's right back to normal because it at first it went all the way to the top and it was real light uh, now it's back back to where it's supposed to be so even just a little bit there and it's not going anywhere and that's on both sides so don't be afraid um, if it doesn't work right away afterwards you might want to check it uh, you know, before you go anywhere, uh, that's what I did. That's what I did, is check it before I went somewhere. And I was a little bit concerned, so I checked it. Uh, I had my mother-in-law come out here and uh, step on the brake. I was spinning the tire, she stepped on the brake, the wheel stopped, I tried the other side, same thing. So I know the hydraulics are working. And then I uh, read about the uh, parking brake, adju brake adjustment, did that, now it works. Now I can put it back on the ground and uh, take it for a test drive. So here we go. All right, let's go for a test drive. Put it in reverse, parking brake on it, stops. Parking brake stops it, we're good. Parking brake works, 10 miles an hour. Stop, 20 miles an hour. Stop, it's working fine. 30 and 40 miles an hour, maybe 50 miles an hour, 60 miles an hour. Maybe I should let it warm up a little bit, eh? This car needs some more work done. It's got 195,733 miles.